Hey guys, and welcome to Accounting Introduction. In this particular lecture, we're going to explore accounting concepts that help us better understand what are financial statements, what are different principles of accounting that allow us to determine and examine the financial of a company to figure out what is ultimately the health of that particular business or organization. Uh, another thing is the format and style of this introduction lecture. I've decided to make it more engaging by introducing myself and recording my actual self and embedded in the lecture. That way, it can be more engaging. It can probably help you understand some of the concepts and terminology that we're going to explore. But more importantly, once we advance to the more challenging modules like financial statements modeling, leverage buyout, M&A modeling, hopefully me being engaging and showing my face can give you that extra push, perhaps even give you that extra uh, encouragement to tackle some of the difficulties once you're dealing with financial modeling and we're actually working in Excel, right? These are some of the things that I didn't have when I was going through my own training or even when I was working full time as an investment banking analyst, someone to help me and guide me along the way once I hit a roadblock or I, or I hit a wall, if you will, to overcome some of those challenges. So I hope that you appreciate this particular style of lecture and you know, hopefully we can make it a little bit more entertaining because I know that I'm gonna be throwing a lot of concepts your way, a, a lot of formulas, a lot of terminology, and it can get boring uh, sometimes. So hopefully me showing my face can uh, keep you again a little bit more uh, engaged and we can make it a little bit more entertaining and fun as well. So with that being said, we can uh, focus our attention to the actual screen and we can dive into accounting uh, principles and focus on our introduction. So for the most part, what is the purpose and goal for this particular workshop? Well, we want to have the ability to read and understand financial statements. We also want to be able to uh, identify the difference between cash and non-cash expenses. For example, depreciation is a non-cash expense. Amortization is also another form of non-cash expense that we're going to be focusing on and examining a little bit more closely in the upcoming slide. In addition to that, I want to point out uh, one minor thing here is make sure that my red marker is working. Here we go, because I'm going to be underlining some of the concepts that I believe are important for you to understand and take away with in this particular introduction lecture. Okay. Now, if you've taken accounting before, that's okay. This is going to be a refresher and we'll continue to build on your prior knowledge. If this is the first time that you're learning about accounting, then don't worry. This is going to be a very smooth and comprehensive introduction to accounting and, and the principles, which by the way, is going to help you once you take principles of accounting uh, one and two at the university level. So this will be a great transition for you and also help you prepare for module number one, which is going to be financial statements modeling. All right. So let's uh, continue here. So let's see here, uh, accounting introduction. So let's dive right in it. So what is accounting? And the best way to really think about accounting is that it's a information system. Okay. That identifies records and communicates the economic events of an organization to interest users. Now, there are two types of interest users that concern themselves with accounting. You have internal users, those are your company executives, your directors, the CEO, uh, essentially officers of the business that are looking at the cash activity, sales activities within their organization so that they can make the correct decision on how to expand the business on whether or not to hire people. So these are internal users. On the other hand, you also have external users. External users are investors, creditors, bank analysts, or it could be you yourself as you're watching this lecture. So for example, if we're looking at a particular company, if it's a publicly traded company, we want to determine if the stock is a buy or is it a sell? How do we do that? Well, we have to familiarize ourselves with the financial statements of the company, with the business model. What is that particular business story? If I myself, let's say if I own a particular company in this particular example, let's say 
Romero Capital. I want to go to you, the viewer, you are the bank. And I say, hey, listen, I want a line of credit in the amount of a million dollars. Will you give me a line of credit in the amount of a million dollars so that I can buy assets or invest in other companies? As the lender, you might review my financials to determine the credit worthiness of my ability to borrow a million dollars and also have the ability to pay it back because no one is going to lend you a million dollars without having enough cash flows, enough sales, or assets to back that particular million dollar in debt. So if we transfer our attention to the slide, what are external users? Investors use accounting information to make decisions to buy, hold, or sell stocks. Creditors, you, uh, such as suppliers, bankers, use accounting information to evaluate the risk, granting credit or lending money. Also, taxing authorities, such as the IRS. Obviously, the government, they want to know how much money you're making because they also want their piece of the pie. Let's not forget about Uncle Sam here. And there's only two certain things in life, death and taxes. Uh, and lastly, what are generally accepted accounting principles, otherwise known as GAAP? This is very important. What does it mean when someone talks about GAAP? And the format or the structure that businesses represent their financial statements, like the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. Well, when they're presenting that information, they're all following generally accepted financial principles or the GAAP format. So what does this mean? Essentially is standards of reporting financial statements that are generally accepted and universally practiced. So in other words, a company here in the US, once they report their financial statements, it's universally recognized if you were an analyst in Europe. It is recognized if you're an analyst in Asia or in the Middle East, it doesn't matter. Or if it's a European company or an Asian company, reporting their financial statements, they're all gonna follow the same format. Now, the, the regulations and the tax authorities on each individual country might be a little bit different, but us as analysts, we're gonna be able to determine the cash flow generation of that business and also the profitability and the margins of the business model because we understand financial statements, because we understand gap. So in conclusion, Accounting is just a system of information that follows GAAP. And we're going to dive a little bit more deeper into understanding what is a, the, the standard or the format of a particular financial statement. So let's continue. Then we also have, of course, your assets, which equals liabilities and shareholders equity. This right here portrays more to the balance sheet. And we're going to explore a little bit more what are the line items of a balance sheet on the asset side, the liability side, and the stockholders equity, because there are specific accounts that make up an entire balance sheet. All right, so let's continue. Now, here's a short break. If you're enjoying our content, don't forget to visit our website, RomeroMentoring.com, and check out our starter analyst programs, where you'll learn financial modeling, investment analysis, valuation, and develop the skills professional analysts apply on the job each day. In addition to that, you'll have access to our platform and exclusive access to content relating to investing, stock analysis, opinion, and much more. Join our growing analyst community and level up your skills today. Now back to our content. Financial statements reporting. What is it and what does it mean? Well, financial statements are a collection of reports about an organization financial results financial condition, and cash flows. Cash flows is very important. At the end of the day, cash is skin. And we're going to go and explore that and actually provide examples in later slides. So financial statements are useful for the following reasons. And some of these reasons we, cut, we touched on on the previous slide, but let's dive a little bit uh, deeper into what this is. Number one, to determine the ability of a business to generate cash, and the sources and uses of that cash. In other words, how are they utilizing that cash flow? Are they investing and buying assets? Are they buying companies? Are they hiring people? Okay, or are they, are they just using the money to pay out a dividend, buy a fancy car, a fancy yacht, and the CEO or the main owner of the company is just enriching their pockets. 
Typically when that happens, you are extracting, sucking the cash out of the business and not reinvesting or deploying it to, con to sustain the growth and make your business bigger uh, at the end of the day. Number two, to determine whether a business has the capability to pay back its debt. So like I mentioned in the previous example, if you are the lender and I, Romero Capital, wants to borrow a million dollars from you, you're of course going to look at my financial statements and you're gonna say if I have the credit worthiness to pay back that loan. Do I generate enough cash? Do I have enough assets? Is my business growing? Is my business healthy? These are very important questions that as the creditor or even as a financial analyst, you have to answer, okay? Number three, to track financial results on a trend line to spot any looming profitability issues. In other words, when you're looking at previous years, let's say we're looking at the past five years of revenue growth, five years of profitability, like profit margins, EBITDA margins, net income, is my business revenue growth on an upward trajectory or on a downward trajectory? Same thing with profitability. Is it declining or is it increasing? This release is very important information that will allow us to understand if this business is healthy into the future. Very, very important. And once we dive into performing due diligence, we're gonna examine this a little bit more closely to see what it really means to perform due diligence and understand the story of a company. Number four, to derive financial ratios from the statements that can indicate the condition of a business. And last but not least, to investigate the details of a certain business transactions as outlined in the disclosure that accompany the statements. So all of these bullet points that I've highlighted right here, this is all really part of performing due diligence. You as a financial analyst, and even right now as a college student or even as an in intern, you should be able to answer each and every one of those bullet points if you're reviewing or studying a particular company. You should be able to tell the story. Are they growing? Are they declining? What is their balance sheet uh, ratios? How much debt do they have? Uh, are they generating more cash flow today than they were last year? What is the overall health of that business? These are very important questions that you need to, uh, I guess, perhaps write down and have a mental check on all of these questions because these questions you're gonna be answering over and over again every time you're looking at a different company. So very, very important. These are, these are all principal questions that you should really be familiarizing yourself with because if I, if I can tell you, this is gonna come up over and over again. You may not realize it, but once you structure it and you have a process in place, you're gonna realize that we're all following the same formula. We're all following the same format. It's just our ability to tell that story on about, about a company it's changes based on our own individual personalities. So these are very important bullet points right here that I believe you should write down and remember once you advance to the second part of the program and begin to do your own due diligence on individual case studies. So uh, let's uh, continue. So what are the main financial statements? I did mention in the previous slide that there are three types of financial statements out there. You have number one, the income statement, Number two, the balance sheet. And number three, the cash flow statement. Let's examine a little bit more carefully what each one of these statements represent and the information it releases to us as investors or even internal users. So the income statement shows the results of the business operations and financial activities for the reporting period. This includes revenue, expenses, and gain or loss. In other words, was your company profitable for this particular quarter? Was it profitable for the first six months of the year? Was it profitable or did it lose money last year or in this particular calendar year? That's ultimately what the income statement represents. Did we make money or did we lose money? Number two, the balance sheet. It shows the business assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity as of the reported date. It does not show information that covers a spam of time. In other words, when you're looking at the balance sheet, all of the accounts that you might see on a balance sheet, like cash, accounts receivables, property plan and equipment, 
current debt, stockholders equity, the number on that account is as of that date. It's not that they accumulated that amount or they earned that amount over the last six months or the last five weeks. No, the, the amount reflected is what's actually reflected on the bank or on the liability side in each and every one of their accounts. It's, it's a very important distinction between an income statement, which is showing how much we've earned since the last reporting period. Whereas in the balance sheet, we're showing the, um, the balance on each and every one of those accounts, whether it's an asset or a liability. Very important distinction between the two. So I hope that's not uh, confusing. And lastly, number three, the cash flow statement shows changes in the business cash inflows and outflows during the reporting period. Now the cash flow statement, I believe it's very, very important because on an income statement, you might show that you're profitable, but on the cash flow statement, you might show that you're losing money. So the cash flow statement to me is perhaps the most important of all three financial statements because at the end of the day, cash is king and cash doesn't lie. You might take a great company that is growing. It's a, it's a high growth company. But when you're looking at the cash flow statement, you might probably identify areas where the company is indicating that they're in trouble. They might be burning too much cash to sustain their uh, current growth rates. And if that is the trajectory of that particular company, it will probably not be around much longer. They cannot sustain losing money and putting together in their income statement showing that they're profitable. It, it just doesn't work that way. That's why having the ability to read these financial statements are so important, especially the cash flow statement, because it just shows what's happening with the money. Is it going out the door or is it staying indoors and we are reinvesting it to sustain that growth? Very, very important. And by the way, each and every one of these statements, the accounts and the explanations I'm providing you, these are interview questions. If someone asks you, you know, which one of the three statements do you consider to be the most important one? I gave you the answer. In my, in my own personal uh, perspective, the cash flow statement is the most important one because if you have the cash flow statement and then the other piece of information that you may want, perhaps could be the balance sheet, we can kind of work our way and reconstruct the income statement. That's a little bit more advanced, but I'm just giving you some ideas of why the cash flow statement is perhaps the most important one. So let's continue. Now, what are the main accounts or line items that make up each and every one of these statements? So let's take a closer look here. So when you're concerning yourself with the income statement, you're looking at revenue, cost of goods sold, salary, general administrative expenses, depreciation, amortization, interest expense, interest income, and taxes. With the balance sheet, like I mentioned previously, you're looking at the cash and equivalent balance, accounts receivables, inventory, and so on. On the liability side, you're looking at how much the company owed from a creditor standpoint, how much they owned their suppliers. The relationship would be with accounts payable, accrued liabilities, how much they owe their employees in, in terms of salaries, utilities, and rent. You have short-term debt, accrued salaries, deferred taxes, and other. On the shareholder's equity portion, you have common stock, paid in capital, treasury minority interest, and then obviously the cash flow statement, operating, investing, and financing activities. So the cash flow statement has three sections, and we're going to explore what each and every one of those sections represent in the upcoming slide. Now, in this particular slide, we're actually giving you a little bit more of an explanation of what each line item on the income statement represents. Now, it's your responsibility to familiarize yourself with each and every one of these accounts because they're important. And once you understand what they mean, you can begin to connect the dots or identify the relationship between the income statement and the balance sheet. And that is gonna help you tremendously when you advance to module number one, when we're building the financial model, when we are calculating working capital, relations, uh, working capital ratios and identifying the relationship with current assets and current liabilities with the income statement. So let me give you an example so that you can better understand this. So for example, the first line here, it's revenue. Revenue is the income that a business has from its normal business activity, usually from the sale of goods 
and services to a customer. The line item that has a direct relationship with revenue on the balance sheet is accounts receivables. Why is that? Let's say that you own a small grocery store and I am your customer. I come in, I buy $100 worth of goods and I pay, let's say, 50% of that in cash. So out of my $100 total sale, I give you $50 in cash and the other remaining amount, the other 50, I put it on my credit card. So you're gonna collect $50 in cash, but you're gonna put the other $50 on credit. That credit is known as accounts receivables. That is gonna help you tremendously when you can connect the dots and figure out the relationship between your income statement and your balance sheet. So let's continue to the next financial statement, which is balance sheets. What are those accounts on the balance sheet? You have cash and equivalents, marketable securities, accounts receivables, which we discussed in the previous uh, example. You have inventory, prepaid assets, property plan and equipment, goodwill, and intangible assets. And I'll repeat again, and I cannot stress this how important it is that you, if, if this is the first time you're learning about accounting, familiarize yourself with each and every one of these terms. Because once we get to the most difficult part of module one, building the balance sheet and forecasting our balance sheet, you need to remember the relationship between your current assets and your income statement line items. These are, this is right here, perhaps the most challenging part for students in our program uh, to get over. It's figuring out the relationship. So in this particular format, we've included in here the definitions of each and every one of, the, of those line items. But you know, we went and created this for you, but now it's your responsibility uh, to put in a little bit of effort in understanding what these line items means. And, and again, I cannot stress this enough, the relationship between the income statement and the balance sheet. So let's move on to the next part of the balance sheet, which is what are liabilities. On the liability side of the balance sheet, we have accounts payables, accrued liabilities, short-term debt, accrued salaries, deferred taxes, long-term debt, capital lease liabilities. Again, familiarize yourself with these. Um, and I just give you a, a brief example. Accounts payable, what is it and what does it mean? Well, accounts payable is money owed by a business to its suppliers shown as a liability on a company's balance sheet. What is the direct relationship with accounts payable and the income statement? Well, the relationship is in, can you guess? It's in cost of goods sold. Why is it cost of goods sold? Because cost of goods sold account for all of the supplies, the raw materials that you need to create your product or even your service. So let's say you own a small grocery store, when you go out and you buy all of the inventory, all of your merchandises that makes up, that is essentially located in your, in your grocery, when you buy all of that, all of those products, you're not buying, you're not paying straight up cash. No, you're buying it on credit. So your supplier has an account that says you uh, grocery store, let's say Romero Grocery. Romero Grocery owes me $100,000 in cash because they bought soda, they bought, uh, I don't know, milk, milk uh, cookies, coffees, I don't know, any type of commodity product that you consume on a daily basis that you'll find at, a, at your normal convenient uh, grocery shelves, right? When they purchase that, they're not purchasing it in cash, they're buying it on credit. So that's why the relationship with accounts payable is cost of goods sold, okay? So again, it's important that you understand these relationships. So as we continue, we have the third part of the balance sheet, which is stockholders equity, the portion of the balance sheet that represents the ownership and how much the company has earned um, in profits over a cumulative period of time. So what do we have? We have shareholders equity or stockholders equity. We have common stock, paid in capital, treasury stock, minority interest, and retained earnings. Again, familiarize yourself with these definitions because they're gonna be very helpful once we jump into financial modeling, module number one. So let's continue. So now we're gonna dive into the concept of accrual accounting. In accounting, there is a principle known as cash versus non-cash expense. And when we record 
specific transactions uh, that occur within a company, we do it on an accrual basis. So what does that mean? Let's look at the first bullet point here, income statement reporting. Specific line items are accounted on an accrual when incurred rather than on a cash basis or on a cash when paid. So remember the example I gave you on cost of goods sold? On the income statement, we might reflect it as an expense, but it doesn't mean that we're paying it in cash. We might put that expense in our accounts payable liability because we're gonna pay it at a later date. Essentially, we are postponing a cash payment that has been reflected on the income statement as an expense, but on the balance sheet is gonna be reflected as a liability because we're gonna pay it later. It might be 30 days down the road, uh, 40, 50 days down the road, depending on our business model, okay? So when we're talking about on an accrual basis, it's just we're deferring the payment for a later date. We are creating a liability for ourselves because we're gonna pay it later down the road. But on our income statement, we are recording the expense. So what's the difference between cash versus non-cash expense? So we have items like cost of goods sold, general administrative expense, taxes, uh, utility expense, your salary, your employee salary expense. On the income statement, we might be recording all of those expenses, but there are certain line items that are actually not a cash expense. And what are those? depreciation and amortization. You may also have uh, goodwill and impairment charges. It is also not a direct uh, cash expense. So when you hear most of the time in, in finance that depreciation and amortization is a non-cash expense, this is what they're referring to. Because on the income statement, we record it as an expense, but it doesn't mean that cash left the business. In the cash flow statement, what we do is we add back that depreciation and amortization expense where the, the net effect is actually zero. And we're gonna show you an actual example so that you can understand what that concept represents and help you better uh, navigate financial statements modeling once we jump into module number one. So let's continue here. So here's the example that I was referring to. So we have Peter. Peter owns a small retail company in its first quarter of operation, the company books 10,000 in revenues. Expenses include 1,500 for employee wages, 2,500 cost of goods sold, 1,000 for fuel, 1,500 vehicle depreciation, and 1,400 in taxes. So when we report these expenses in a gap basis, this is what you're seeing. What you're seeing right here on the screen is revenue, cost of goods sold, gross profit, all of your operating expenses, EBITDA, you subtract depreciation, you end up getting EBIT, other, otherwise known as operating income. You subtract your interest expense, you have pre-income, uh, pre-tax income, you subtract your taxes, and then you end up with net income. This right here, this format that is being illustrated in this slide, this is on a gap format. You start with revenue, you subtract all expenses, then you subtract or add any interest income or interest expense, then you subtract your taxes and you arrive to net income. So if we were to reflect this on a spreadsheet, this is exactly how we, we would be reflecting it. This income statement is following GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. Okay, so let's continue. Now, with the example, Peter, retail company has one truck in its fleet. The truck needs some expense repairs in the amount of $1,000. Knowing that the company booked a profit of $2,100 this quarter, Peter went to the bank to take out the $1,000 needed. However, to his disappointment, there was only $100 in the bank account. Now, let's pause here for a second. In the previous slide, we saw that the company generated $2,100 of net income in profits. But when you go to the bank, there's only $100. What does that mean? Well, remember when I talked about accrual accounting, cash versus non-cash expenses? That's what we're going to be adjusting for in the cash flow statement. So as we continue, cash from, opera uh, from operations is derived from all income items that are not yet paid or received in cash. Remember the example of 
cost of goods sold, when you buy your raw materials and those supplies from your suppliers, but you don't pay it in cash first, you going to defer that payment for a later date and you put it in your accounts payable. So right here in this particular income statement format, I put right next to the main line items, the relationship, your, your revenue has a relationship with accounts receivables. Your cost of goods sold has a relationship with accounts payable. Total operating expense has a relationship with accrue expenses. Depreciation has a relationship with depreciation or amortization, or actually this should be property, plant, and equipment on your balance sheet. Why? Because on your balance sheet, you have property, plant, and equipment, which is part of your assets, but to account for the aging of that property, plant, and equipment is being reduced or lowered by depreciation. Uh, the amortization part would be the relationship with your intangible assets. Those things might be contracts, patents, trademarks. So you'll get a patent appraiser or an intangible asset accountant, and he might give you an appraisal for what your intangible assets are and how much in value it will decline each year. The decline in value each year, it's your amortization expense. And lastly, we have income tax expense, which the relationship is with deferred taxes. And there's a couple of other more relationships here that I should actually point out. For example, net income on the balance sheet, this relates to retained earnings. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it here, retain, and then ER for earnings. So net income is shown on the balance sheet under the retain earnings account. And I believe we gave that explanation in the previous slide where we were showing your stockholders equity accounts explanation. So again, go back, familiarize yourself with it. But in this particular example, I'm showing you the relationships because again, I cannot stress this in the importance of this. It's gonna help you with module one once we begin financial modeling. So let's see here, the second bullet point. Cash flow from operations. This includes your net income plus depreciation amortization, any deferred tax minus changes in working capital. What is working capital? Well, working capital, if you want to find the net calculation, will be in this particular example, accounts receivables minus accounts payable minus accrued expenses. We dive much deeper into calculating working capital in module one. So if you've taken accounting before, this is just scratching the surface. There's a lot more to be said about working capital, which we examine and explore more carefully in module number one. All right, so let's continue. So with this example, Peter did not focus on the fact that net income does not equals to cash available. Okay, so remember that just because you show a profit on your net income doesn't mean you are actually generating that uh, amount in cash flow. Net income doesn't necessarily translate to cash. He did not consider that 35% of his customers paid on credit. So even though he reported revenues of 10,000, he only received 65% of that in cash or 6,500. Peter should have taken his profits of 2,100 and adjusted, this is very important, adjusted it for non-cash items such as credit receivable, deduct the 3,500 and depreciation add back of 1,500 to estimate how much cash he actually has in the bank. And this is where we begin to do our own reconciliation of the cash flow statement and the income statement and also with the balance sheet. And we show how we actually do this and again in module one. But this is just preparing you for the type of adjustments that we're gonna be making uh, as financial analysts, as equity research or investment banking analysts. The second bullet point, on a cash basis, Peter collected 6,500 and paid out expense of 6,400. Accordingly, he only has 100 in the bank, which is not enough to repair the truck if he has to pay cash for the repair. So let's continue. So Peter did not realize that he was not, that he has not received all of his revenue. So here it is, here is the adjustment, right? So remember we had, total revenues of 10,000, but on credit, he received 3,500. So if we look 
at this lower part right here, this would be your cash flow statement adjustment adjustments. You have your net income, okay? You have to subtract the 3,500 because we did not collect $3,500 of cash. This 3,500 goes into your accounts receivables. On top of that, he needs to add back depreciation of $1,500. Although on the income statement is recorded as an expense, it's a non-cash expense. Cash did not leave the business. So in order to account for that, we added back is a zero net change effect. And then lastly, when you take the net amount of all of this, you end up with 100. That is the $100 that was in the bank, not 2100. So it's very important that you understand this reconciliation right here, especially if you're new to accounting. Uh, I would say pause the video here, go back, replay what I said so that you can understand this very basic example. Because just the same way I walked you through this example, this example could be, could be given to you in an interview. So write it down on a note, write it down on a piece of paper so that you get your muscle memory engaged and working so that you remember that net income doesn't equate to cash. You have to make adjustments on the cash flow statement to truly reflect how much cash we've generated for the given year or that particular period. I cannot stress the importance of that. It's, it's very, very important, okay? So let's continue. Now, how do we reconcile the income statement with the balance sheet and the cash flow statement as well? So here we have, as you remember, the income statement, okay? Here below we have the cash flow statement. And here to the right of the screen, we have the balance sheet. So on the first bullet point, tying it all together accounted for on an accrual when incurred basis rather than on a cash basis when paid. Remember I said that expenses on your income statement, it's gonna be on an accrual basis because it's gonna go on the liability side. We're going to uh, postpone our cash payment for a later date. So. How do we reconcile this? Here is your $3,500, which goes into your accounts receivables, okay? Here is your depreciation and amortization, which impacts your depreciation and affects your property plan and equipment, giving you net PP&E, okay? Then we have our net income, which impacts our retain earnings on the balance sheet. And lastly, the cash that's on the cash flow statement, the ending balance of 100 is added to the cash on our balance sheet, our cash and equivalence line item. And when we add all of this together, you're gonna get $2,100 on the asset side and $2,100 on the total liability and stockholders equity side. Our balance sheet has to match. And this is how we were to construct our income statement, our cash flow statement, and our balance sheet if we were given this particular example in an interview and you had to write it and plot it all out on a piece of paper. So I hope this gives you a very clear understanding of the relationship of all financial statements and how this particular scenario will actually flow through each statement, okay? So let's continue. So in closing, a couple of points. Financial statements are a collection of reports about an, an organization's financial results, financial conditions, and cash flows. The, stand, uh, the standard content of a set of financial statements are pretty straightforward by this point, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. Specific income statement lines are accounted on an accrual basis rather than on a cash basis. Cash expense versus non-cash expense. Cash expenses may be cost of goods sold, general and administrative expenses, taxes, which by the way, will be impacting our balance sheet liabilities line because we might be upsetting those payments for a later date. And non-cash expense like depreciation and amortization will also be reflected on the income statement, but we're gonna add it back on the cash flow statement. So that said, folks, I hope you found this brief introduction of accounting useful. If it's the first time that you've seen it, Please replay this video if you have a, a little concern or some of the concepts is not quite that clear yet. Write it down on a piece of paper. You also have access to Google. Google is a great resource, which I didn't have when I was going through uh, my education 
uh, experience learning all of these concepts. I mean, I, I learned a lot of this stuff really on my own. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have uh, a teacher to kind of sit me down and walk me and explain these concepts uh, individually, right? It's a lot different when you're reading a textbook versus having from a practitioner standpoint, what's really important when we're talking about accounting. Now, there's a difference between being a financial analyst, an investment banker, an equity research analyst, or an investment analyst than being an accountant where you are writing down and recording each business transaction. Essentially, you are becoming a bookkeeper where you are maintaining all of the line items that the company has on a balance sheet and on a cash flow statement. It's a huge difference between being an accountant where you're recording these general entries and preparing the financial statements for external users like yourself and myself as professional investors or even as investment bankers um, and, and just generally, again, like an external user. So again, folks, I hope you found this introduction lecture into accounting helpful. I hope that this new video style format where I am introducing myself and recording myself has been engaging and helped you along the way with the concepts. And, and lastly, I hope this wasn't boring. <laughs> I hope looking at me kind of uh, make you, made you continue to, to watch this and just get you a little bit over the hump. So with that being said, folks, I'll end the video here. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next module. Take care. Bye-bye.